Hello everyone. My name is Rihanna. I'm a software engineer and a crafter. I love creating things with or without code. And in my free time, I am kind of a community geek. I am a Google developer expert for web technologies, uh, Flutter and uh, Dart. And um, I'm also a Women Tech Makers ambassador and uh, GD Giro and also a Flutterista. Today, I'm here to speak about Flutter and what makes it awesome. So first thing first, what is Flutter? If you have never heard about Flutter, Flutter is a UI toolkit made by Google that provides a fast and expressive way for developers to build beautiful applications for mobile, desktop, and web from a single code base and using a single programming language called Dart. Flutter is a free and open source and is in stable version for mobile development since the uh, end of 2019. And it is used by developers and organizations around the world, including enterprises, uh, agencies, and startups for developing applications that run on Android and or iOS but it has support also for compiling the same code into a web application or a desktop application. Flutter allows you to create beautiful apps, quite attractive and very responsive to iterations and animations without compromises for a creative UI design. Flutter offers everything you need to create a beautiful user experience and user interface. As a developer, you have control over each single pixel of the screen. You or your designer never have to compromise on your vision and uh, creativity. Layout can be created from scratch, of course, but for common use cases, there are a series of built-in components and tools that are going to save you hours of work offered by Flutter. Flutter includes a full set UI components that deliver pixel perfect experiences across all devices. These Flutter components are actually called widgets. The core of Flutter's layout mechanism is widgets. In Flutter, almost everything is a widget. The images, icons, buttons, text, and so on. Everything you see in a Flutter app are all widgets, but things you don't see are also widgets such as rows, columns, and grids that arrange, constrain, and align the visible widgets. Everything is a widget at a point that even the app itself is a widget. Huge one, but still a widget. Developing a Flutter app means composing and nesting widgets to build more complex widgets. And we compose and uh, create our widgets in a declarative way. In Flutter, we create layout by declaring intent. We create a nested tree of widgets in code. We use parameters to indicate desired look and behavior, and we just let Flutter figure out the how. Here's a snippet of code showing corresponding UI to the hello next the text and Flutter logo you see below in the slide. A row with properties to help position the children and a list of children, in this case, text and a logo image. It's like saying, hey, Flutter, I got a parent widget and I got some child widgets. I will tell you how much space they need and what their layout constraints are. And then you figure it out. So we declare our intent and Flutter does all the offset and all those positioning for us. Uh, uh, and also add to the power of declarative layout, the power of having already built in beautiful widgets. Flutter gives a series of pre-built material components widgets to create apps embarrassing the typical material design stuff. And in the other hand, gives a series of pre-built Cupertino widgets to have a typical iOS-like design style. And if you are not happy, it allows you to create or extend your own widgets for a highly personalized tailor-made experience. 
Are we expected to know all the widgets while developing in Flutter? Not really, but knowing how to browse them or to classify them sure will help a lot. As we start to compose and practice, some widgets are very common and some we start to check and discover them in the catalog as we need, as we need them. Starting with the layout related widgets that can take a single child as widget or a list of widgets such as uh, container, padding, command, row, list view, and so on. On top of that, there are widgets also for the animation purposes. Having a series of pre-built widgets to use helps for sure making development fast. But Flutter combines this high velocity development with native performance and quality, and also a multi-platform reach. As I mentioned, the same Flutter code compiles into mobile, but also web and desktop apps. Flutter is fast, and Flutter applications are fast and responsive to iteration, and they animate with Grace. From the start, it was designed to be able to support glitch-free and uh, junk-free graphics at the display's native speed. It is powered by the Kia 2D graphics engine, which enables hardware accelerated graphics at 60 frames per second. And on top of this, the Flutter code is complied into native machine code. Let's talk about productivity. Well, Flutter makes us very productive. The development cycle is very fast, faster than native development. Once we, uh, we well practice coding in Flutter and learn its uh, fundamentals, it becomes really fast to develop an app in Flutter compared to developing with its competitors or even native apps. Flutter introduces a revolutionary ability for developers and designers to iterate over their apps in real time. The so-called stateful hot reload feature allows you to change the code of your app and see the changes in real time in an emulator or uh, in a connected device without having to start the app or go back to the screen you were on. Hot reload transforms the way we build an app by making us more productive and allowing us to focus on the new features faster. Flutter is written in Dart, and in order to develop a Flutter app, we need to learn one language, Dart. Dart is a language that has existed since 2011, was created by Google to develop web applications. And now it's client-optimized, general purpose object oriented programming language for creating fast apps that run on any platform. If you are familiar with object oriented programming language like um, Java or C Sharp, you might find many similarities and uh, you'll find Dart easy to and uh, straightforward to learn. On the other hand, if you are familiar with JavaScript or better with TypeScript, some concepts seem similar. If you are nearby, still Compared to any other programming language, Dart is uh, easy to learn. One of the best features uh, of Flutter is the ability to use code, to see the code chains in real time in an uh, emulator or connected devices. This is thanks to Dart, because it can be both interpreted and compiled. Just-in-time compilation enables Flutter to recompile code directly in the device or emulator while the app is running and while we are developing. This leads to a very fast development cycle and enables to, um, the hot reloading feature. On the other hand, the ahead of time compilation allows that the libraries and functions used by Flutter app code to be compiled directly to native code. And this makes it clear why Dart better suits Flutter. It takes credit at least for the stateful hot reload, for the syntax simplicity along declarative way to write code, and to native compilation feature. Flutter, of course, is not the only framework for developing cross-platform applications. 
to list to, to list some of the competitors, we have like React Native or Ionic or Native Script and uh, and so on. So why Flutter is Ionic? Let's check out what is behind Flutter. Flutter is designed as a, an extensible layered system. It exists as a series of independent libraries that each depend on the underlying layer. And this makes it easy, uh, extend, easily extendable, either on top or in the middle. The green part that you are seeing here is all written in Dart. And after we have the engine built in C and C++ code, to the underlying operating system, actually Flutter applications are packaged in the same way as any other native application. A platform-specific embedder provides uh, an entry point and it coordinates with the underlying operating system for access, uh, accessing to the services like the rendering surfaces, the accessibility, the inputs, and extra, and manage the message event loop. The web version of the architectural layer diagram is this one. While the general architectural concept applies to all platforms that Flutter supports currently, there are some unique characteristics of uh, Flutter for web. Currently, it supports two rendering approaches. The first one is called the DOM Canvas, and the, it uses the combination of HTML, CSS, and Canvas API for rendering into the browser. And the second one is called Canvas Kit, which brings Kia, which is the rendering engine, to the web using WebAssembly and WebGL. In any case, Europe and the upper layer of the Flutter SDK are unchanged. The bottom layer is the layer that will take care of rendering out Flutter app into any modern web browser. And looking closer from a mobile app perspective, the finished application code, it is actually a native code with ability to control every pixel on the device. The pictures here show an overview structure diagram behind a cross-platform mobile app development. The top picture shows how Flutter's competitors like React Native is structured, while at the bottom we see a Flutter app, uh, how a Flutter app is structured. Your Flutter application is deployed actually with the rendering engine, and this is why your app can control every pixel in the device and it doesn't use the native UI components actually. Instead, it uses its proper rendering engine, shipped along the app to draw pixel by pixel your user interface into the device. The code uh, is compiled into native code and it runs at native performance without the need of, uh, let's say, virtual machine or interpreters as the other uh, cross-platform competitors do. So, so far we explored the user interfe uh, interface, uh, interface part of developing a Flutter app, and we saw the architecture of Flutter. But when developing apps, we usually need more than that. Uh, sometimes we need to explore if there are available packages written by someone else, instead of creating our own and use this package inside our project. And sometimes we need to interface with specific platform features, such as the location, Bluetooth, camera, audio, and other sensors. In this case, we can use Flutter plugins. Now, uh, most of the plugins are already developed and maintained thanks to the contribution of the community. We specify our plugins inside our projects and guided by the plugins documentation, we use these features inside our widgets. In case if we don't find anything that works for us, even here we can write you our own plugins. Of course, in case of we want a very specific feature that has to do with the device feature, in this case, we must also know to develop a native application in which we want to run the application, of course. So for example, for Android specific plugin, we write in Android or Kotlin and for iOS specific plugin, 
we might code in, uh, in Swift. To see the existing plugins and packets, we can go to pub.dev. And while browsing, the higher is the score of the package, the better. At the same time, you can check the support also of the platform uh, by the package. If the package supports an Android or iOS or, uh, or web applications. So I guess by now I already give you a hint why Flutter is awesome. So where to start from? And to really get started developing Flutter apps, the very first step is to set up the environment on our machine. I won't go through the details here, but you can find all the requirements and the steps in the link at the flutter.dev website. You can build apps with Flutter using any text editor, but it's always recommended using one of the supported editors for an even better experience, of course. Choose the one you prefer between Android Studio or IntelliJ or Visual Studio Code or Emacs. Each editor has plugins that assist you with the code completion or syntax highlighting or widget editing, uh, even for um, running and debugging supports uh, and more. So check out the link for more info and for the setup of uh, a preferred editor. If it's not the case to go through all the installation and setup process, then you can start to play with Flutter or so online. You can use dartpad.dev where you have some samples of Flutter, you can open and play around with that, modify the code and start learning Flutter or create a new Flutter pad and start coding in Flutter directly online. Another online tool that supports Flutter is CodePane. There you have different templates and samples from where to start, uh, to start from. There are cool examples that you can check out. You got all the code in a single page, and if it's a good way to play and start, modify, maybe add code and see what changed right away in your browser. Now let's uh, see a very silly Flutter app. If we have all the setup in our machine and we created a Flutter app, by default it will be creating this counter app, in which every time we click, the button, it counts uh, how many times it's clicked. Here is a Flutter project structure. And uh, <clears throat> let's see which file and folder do what and uh, why they exist. So uh, here we see the Android and the iOS directories, uh, which hold a complete Android and iOS app with all their respective files. And whenever you want to implement any platform specific feature, you can implement it by going in these directories. The lib directory holds all your Dart code used to run RAP, and the main Dart is the file where we start to write our Flutter codes. pubspec.yaml is a special file. It contains your app name, description, the SDK version, dependencies, and other important stuff. And the test directory is for writing test in Dart. Then based on, on additional platform you enabled uh, support for, you'll have other directories. In this case, I enabled web, and here I got the web directory. Let's get inside the main Dart file and see the code snips, uh, snippets. Every time we start a new Flutter project, there is a single line of code that most of times we don't need to change. This line ensures that our Flutter app is started and shown to the user. The main function is the entry point of our application, telling Dart where it should start running our code. And after that, we start to compose our widgets. In Flutter, widgets are, uh, can be of two types, stateless or stateful. Default examples of stateless widgets are, for example, image, uh, icon, text, container, and so on. And default example of stateful widgets are widgets for animation, for example, checkbox, uh, checkbox and, uh, and so on. 
stateless widgets are stateless, of course. So you basically draw your widget once, and that's it. It's not meant to change in any way, but rather just simply show how to define how you define it. Default stateless widgets can have input data, but they cannot change the input data. If that changes externally, then they will be simply re-rendered. Referring to the counter app, here's an example of stateless widget we define. When we create a stateless widget, we extend stateless widgets a class, and all widgets have the build method. That is where we define what should be rendered in the screen. Stateful widgets can still have input data, but the main difference is that they have data inside the widget that changes. They maintain an internal state. If data changes internally, whereas the internal state gets uh, updated, that causes a render too. And they will re-render also when data is changed externally. Here is how we define a stateful widget. We have a class extending the stateful widget class and uh, we create an internal state. And to update the state, we use the set state method. Every time the set state method is uh, called, the widget will re-render. Flutter will take care for us the optimizing of the rendering or maintaining the rendering, or it will know how to re-render in a performant way. And here is what a widget composition looks like. In Flutter, we compose our widgets inside the build method. So if we say that everything is a widget, the upper bar should be a widget, the floating button also should be a widget, the same for the text and for the number of other uh, included widgets. And that is how we build in Flutter. So to recap, we have seen the layered architecture of Flutter and what makes it unique compared to its competitors. We have seen the declarative and composable way to write a Dart code in order to build a Flutter application and how it is portable in different uh, platforms. Thanks to its unique architecture and rich tools, including a pre-built beautiful widgets, Flutter allows us to create beautiful, uh, fast, engaging, animated, and very interactive applications. We have seen why is fast, fast in terms of high development velocity and fast in terms of running smoothly and um, junk free in different platforms. We have seen how productive it can make a developer thanks to its rich widget catalog and thanks, that, thanks to the fact that it permits to build right away a beautiful UI. And on top of that, to its hot reload feature, that allows to paint real time in real time our code while, while coding into a simulator or a connected device. The roadmap of Flutter is running the same code base on every screen and platform. The idea behind it is to develop once and compile to native app for different platforms with a single command line, or almost not yet there for all platforms, but Still, it's in active development. Uh, Flutter has been stable since December of 2019 for mobile, and now count, counts over 90,000 apps on the Google Play Store. For the status of the other platforms that you are interested on, please check out the flutter.dev uh, website, uh, flutter.dev slash desktop or flutter.dev slash web. So how to get started or how to get familiar with Flutter? Let's see the starter kit. Here I will show you some of my personal tips to get started with Flutter and to get familiar with it. If you have experience in developing applications for other platforms, then you can learn Flutter really fast. In the official Flutter website, there is a brief documentation for the developers who are from another platform like uh, Android, iOS, uh, React Native, or Web, or Xamarin. You can check the docs in the, in the link here. 
Flutter is very easy to learn. Even if you have never coded in Flutter, you'll feel familiar with it. Flutter can be learned by watching videos, doing available codes or reading documentations, blogs, seeing examples, and obviously by practicing, practicing and practicing. Uh, I think a good way to learn fast and with fun is to find someone with your own interests and learn together. We need to know Dart in order to develop in Flutter. The simplest way is to run uh, a Dart code inside a dartpad.dev, which is an open source compiler that works in any modern browser uh, that I was talking about earlier. Uh, it supports also Flutter online development. It's a perfect tool for the beginners that want to play with Dart or Flutter and try the code directly in your browser. It comes with the latest features and it's uh, straightforward to use. Then you can take a tour of the language in the second link and check out videos on YouTube. Flutter.tv is the official Flutter website. You can start there. You have most of the things you want to learn uh, about Flutter there. Then you can check out code labs uh, and, uh, and do them. Read the Flutter blog on Medium or join the community and keep being updated. There are so many examples and so many code labs. You can do them. You can play in the playgrounds, wander around the examples in the open source uh, codes and play in practice. There are many Flutter videos also and channels on YouTube and here are the link to some check out then too. And one another thing that makes Flutter awesome is that Flutter is uh, open source and has a great support for the online community. If you go to flutter.dev slash community, you'll find different links and groups. You can find ways to get involved in the Flutter developer community and as well as links to resources that can help answer any of your questions and doubts. Speaking about community, check out the Flutteristas, a worldwide community of people whose gender identity is either female or then binary and have interest in Flutter. We have a coming Flutter conference on the end of March. Check out details on the flutteristas.org for more info, or if you want to join, don't hesitate to contact me or, or either contact at Flutteristas on Twitter. Thank you very much for being here. Uh, enjoy the rest of the event. And for any doubt, any question, reach out on Twitter, and this is my handle. See you.